Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team. This video is going to be about swing trading options. So I'm gonna show you a few of the most popular strategies. So I'm gonna show you naked calls and puts, and then I'm also gonna show you debit spreads and credit spreads. Now there are also many other different strategies that you can do with uh, swing trading options, but those are some of the more popular, some of the most common, and especially if you're you know, more of a newer or moderate trader, uh, those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Those are also the, the uh, trades that we call out in our community. We do options trades, so we typically do uh, mostly spreads, so we're either doing credit spreads or debit spreads. We do some uh, naked call options as well. But again, these are going to be the trades that we mostly take on a daily basis ourselves, as well as what we show to other community members. So if you're new to options, this is going to be a little bit more kind of right to the point. Uh, if you need more help on some of the basics, make sure you take our options courses on our website. So right here, I'm going to get into right into the strategies. I'm going to show you how to do them. So if, again, if you need more of the uh, basics, take our courses. So let's take a look at Apple here, right? So we're going to start off and we're going to talk about naked calls and naked puts. You buy a naked call if you believe the price of the stock is going to go up, and you buy a naked put if you believe that the price of the stock is going to go down. Now, naked calls and puts, good strategy. However, you have to know what you're doing. They can be very risky. Again, if you just come in and trade them blind, if you don't have a trading plan, uh, as an options buyer, naked, buying naked calls and puts, uh, time value is not on your side. So if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you know, you could lose a lot of money and the option could expire worthless. So again, time and a place, you don't want to do it randomly. You got to know technical analysis, support, resistance, patterns, all of that good stuff. So let me show you here on an options chain. You would buy a call if you believe the price of Apple is going to continue to rise. You would buy a put if you believe it's going to fall. So you can see some basic trend lines right here. You can see prices near resistance. So you can say, okay, is this building a flat top, flag, a pennant? Is it going to break out? Or is it going to hit resistance and fall? Again, I wouldn't just buy a naked call or put here. But uh, for this video, let me show you what you would do, you know, and some of the different strategies. So if you go over to a call ch options chain right over here, you'll see the different expiration dates over here. You'll see all the different dates, and then you'll see days over here. This is days until expiration. So this is the time that you have left on your options contract. So as an options buyer, time is not on your side. So every day that goes by and that option doesn't move in your favor, you lose money, right? So right here, you can see there's weekly contracts. So these are like those short-term weekly contracts. They expire uh, every Friday. And then you have monthly contracts, these ones in the gray over here. Right. So weeklies, a lot of people will do, you know, short term swing trading strategies. So like they might be selling the pops holding, you know, for two or three days. Um, so there's short term swing trading strategies and then there's longer term. Right. You might go a month, two months. You can go out very long term. Right. So, again, you want to be very careful just buying naked calls and puts way out in advance. Right. You got to have a strategy for what you're doing. But let's say for, you know, for the sake of this video, let's open up right here the February 21st. You can see 23 days until expiration, right? So this is the nearest monthly contract. And when you open up over here, you can see on the left is the call side and on the right is the put side, right? So calls mean that you believe the price of the stock is going to go up. Puts mean you believe the price of the stock is going to go down. So let's get rid of some of these strikes here and we'll go to, you know, we'll just kind of show the top 10 over here. So let me show you right here. This, uh, you know, tab that you see here is probability of in the money. So this is the chances or the odds of you being in the money on your trade by expiration date as an options buyer, right? So actually, let me expand that again. Let's go out. And let's do a lot more. So you can see probability of in the money. The deeper, you can see these areas here. Dark black area is out of the money. 
purple is in the money. So that's on the call side. On the put side, the black is the out of the money. The purple is the in the money. So the deeper in the money that you go on the call side, the higher the price of the options contract. The deeper you go in the money on the put side, so where it's price is above, right? So on the call side, the deeper that you go in the money where it's price is below, so you can see these strike prices are below the price of Apple, the more the expensive they get. The higher that you go right over here on the put side, the more the expensive they get because you're putting it to someone else at a higher price. Now, I wanna bring your attention to probability of in the money because you can see over here, this is the chances or the odds of success uh, that your trade will be in the money by expiration. That's why you're paying way more because you can see very, very high odds of success. So if you're buying a naked call really deep in the money, uh, you have a higher chance of success in the trade. That doesn't mean you take that trade, right? There's things like open interest, volume. You want to look at that stuff. Again, Apple's a very highly liquid stock. But if you were to go and buy a naked call option, you can see the deeper that you go in the money, the higher you have a chance of succeeding. Now, this is where it gets very risky with buying options because also a lot of new traders will come in and they'll be like, I want to trade Apple, uh, but, you know, I can't afford really deep in the money contracts, so I'm going to buy out of the money. And they buy out of the money contracts and they lose their money. Why do they buy out of the money? Because they're cheaper. But when you look over here, probability of in the money, the cheaper you go, the more chance you have to lose money because you can see your odds of success drastically diminish. So the cheaper your options contract goes, you know, you, if you're buying a naked call, Sure, you might pay 100, 200 bucks for it, but look at your odds of success. That means 15%. That means you have an 85% chance of losing on that trade. Same thing again on the put side. The deeper that you go, as you can see, the um, probability of in the money, higher chances of success over here. That's why you're paying much more for the options contract. The more out of the money you go, you can see probability uh, drastically diminishes you know, of being successful. So that's where buying naked calls and puts is very risky. Again, time and a place, if you're good with your technical analysis, if you're holding short term, if you give yourself enough time value, that's okay to trade them. But again, you have to have a plan. If you're new, you don't just buy naked without having a plan. So again, just to show you here, if you were to go, let's say, you know, with Apple, if you believed price was going to go up, you could have, you know, just go right over here and click on the ask and you can see uh, one options contract is the equivalent of 100 shares. So every options contract is times 100. So that would be $8.60 times 100. So that would be $860. So let's, just, let's break this down on the call side. You're buying one Apple options contract, 100 shares, right, with an expiration date of February. So what was that? 23 days until expiration right over here. Your break even on the trade is $150.60. The current price of Apple is around $143. So Apple's got to move, what is that, $6 or so uh, to break even. So you're paying $860, you need that trade, you need Apple to rise in price for that contract uh, to rise in value. If Apple trades sideways or falls down, then you start you know, cutting into this $860, you start losing a lot more of the money, right? So you need price on that call side and you need price to move. Right. So that's what it looks like on an out of or an in the money. That's just, you know, a typical two strikes in the money. Let's go and do, you know, a couple strikes out of the money. Let's go to the 145. I can right click or I can just click on it right here. So now again, it's cheaper, 720 bucks, but you see how the break even now is 152. So now Apple has to move another $2 higher. So again, the more out of the money, you know, your break evens go further out. So again, less likely to succeed on the trade. That's why the options contract is cheaper. So this is where if you're new, I can't stress enough the importance of cheaper is not always better, right? 
So again, calls and puts, they make up the foundation of all the other strategies, uh, credit spreads, debit spreads. So that's why I'm focusing a little bit more on these calls and puts so you understand uh, what happens when you go into credit spreads and debit spreads. So that's with buying a naked call and a naked put. If you went, that means again, you believe the price of the stock is going to go up. Let's say you believe that Apple is going to fall, right? So if you go over here and let's say you were to buy a put, so you're buying a put, right? 145, the current price of Apple is 143. That means you believe Apple is going to fall, right? So you'd put it to somebody else. So you can either, you know, buy and sell the options contract or you could also exercise your options contract. Again, you know, most people trade options. They just buy and sell the options contract themselves. If you have a very large account, you have a lot of money, then you might decide to exercise and own shares. But most people just trade the option. Again, you have to have a larger account to own 100 shares of Apple or whatever company that you're trading. So let's say we put in this order here at 145. You'll see same 850 over here. And on this right over here, you can see that break even is 136. So that means you need the price of Apple to fall on a put, right? Calls, you want the price to go up. Puts, you want the price to go down, right? So again, you don't just buy randomly because uh, you can see on this trade over here, you know, I have a 50 50 ch chance, right? So I'm paying 800. Was it $850 for basically a 50 50 shot of being successful on this trade, right? Not really good odds. Trading short term, trading momentum, having a trading strategy, yes, that's good. But just being a trader that's like, oh, I'm just going to buy a contract and hold and, you know, hope that it's going to go up, not a good strategy, right? So that's with two strikes in the money. Let's just go two strikes out of the money right down here right here, just show you the difference. Uh, again, when you go to place this order, Apple needs to fall down to $135. And you can see on the trade, 48%. So it's a 50-50 shot that you're gonna be successful on the trade. So calls and puts, really good strategy when you know technical analysis, when you know and you're, you have a trading exit strategy, you've mapped out support and resistance, you're confident on that trade, you cut your losses small, again, trades will go against you a lot. Uh, so if they do, you know, it's not like you're gonna hold and you know, if something goes against you, you might decide to cut your losses quickly, right? Keep those losses small, let your winners run. So just to summarize here, calls and puts, calls and naked call, you believe the price of the stock is going up. Naked put, you believe that price is going down. In the money are going to be more expensive because your probability of success on the trade is going to be higher. Out of the money is going to be less expensive over here on the calls and the put side because your probability of being successful on the trade is not as good. So now let's go and talk about credit spreads, right? So with a credit spread, you're doing a, a selling strategy. So you're an options seller, not an options buyer. Now you could sell options. You can sell naked options. We highly suggest not doing them unless you really know what you're doing because they can really rip your head off because the risk is so, it's just so astronomical on being a naked seller of options. So whereas if you're just buying a naked call or a put, you just lose the money that you made or put into the trade. So if you bought a, let's say a naked put right over here, the most you would lose on this trade is $850, right? But let's say you were to go and do, um, let's say you were going to sell. Uh, let's just go over here and say you don't believe the price. You believe the price of the stock of Apple is going to stay, let's say, below 150 bucks, right? So if I went over here and instead of being an options buyer, if I was to sell this 150 right over here, right? When I go over here, you can see, you know. Max profits 520 bucks, but my max loss is infinite because the price of Apple could go to infinity, right? So, you know, it's it's a very, very risky strategy because your losses are just huge when you're just an options seller. However, 
what you can do is turn that into a credit spread. Again, this is not going to be a video on what strikes you should, you know, buy and sell with credit and debit spreads. We teach that stuff in our courses, in our next level content, and also in our trade rooms. This is going to be just kind of the psychology be doing behind doing a credit spread, debit spread, and the strategies, but, you know, specific strikes, there's a lot more that goes into it. So for the sake of this video, you know, let's say with a credit spread, there's call credit spreads and then put credit spread. A call credit spread is when you believe the price of the stock is going to fall. You're a seller, you're an option seller to the buyer of the call. When you do a put credit spread, you are um, believing that the price of the stock is going up because you're selling to a put buyer. So for this first strategy, let's say you believe the price of the stock of Apple is going to stay below 150 you would come over here and let's say you were looking at the um, you know the uh, 150 strike you can change this up here to vertical and go and do right down over here you can click right down over here and build your credit spread down right over here so you can see I'm selling the 150 and then you're buying, right? So you're doing a combination of selling and buying. And what this does is it lowers, you'll see right here, your break even. Um, you can see break even is 150.75. So basically what you want, just to kind of take a step back, is you want price to stay below $150 by expiration or your strike price in order to receive your full credit. On this right here, your break even would be 150.75. So your max profit is 75. Your max loss is 175. So your profit loss, you you make less doing a credit spread than you would on a naked call or put. It also lowers your break even price, and your max losses are definitely. You know, they can go, they go higher the more that you widen your strikes, but your probability of success gets higher. And the, you know, again, we teach this stuff in our next level courses, but the, you know, the more high probability trades that you look to take. But as you can see over here, you know, this is just doing a, you're not doing a naked selling strategy, whereas, you know, I just showed you that max loss gets really huge. You're capping your losses and you're building a spread. So you want price to stay away from those that short strike uh, that you're looking to enter into the trade. So you can see, you know, this one max profit 75, max loss is 175. If I go and I widen my strikes and go to, you know, 150, you can see now I'm taking in more credit. So the more that you widen the strikes, the more uh, credit you take in, but also more max loss, right? So the more you widen, the more you'll see the more credit that you will take in. So your credit comes a lot more or it gets a lot higher and then your losses go a lot higher. Now, obviously you don't want to be letting yourself go to those max loss trades. So like any trade, if a trade goes against you, consider cutting your losses and keeping them small. Uh, Cause a lot of people might say, well, why would you risk, you know, 800 for the ability to make 200? Well, because you're going to be building higher probability trades as an option seller. You're not just selling random strikes, um, but, you know, credit spreads, again, you're what you're looking to do is you want price to stay away from those strikes. So whatever that you're selling, you want price to stay away from. So that's on the call credit side. You want price to stay, you know, if you're selling that 150, your break even right here is the 152.39. So the 152.39 is your break even, but if it expires below 150 by expiration, you get to cre keep this whole premium of 239. Now you also want to look to consider taking your profits along the way, not holding all the time until expiration. Again, that's where managing your trades come in. So, you know, a lot of traders will look to take profit around 50%. Uh, or so once they've had 50% of their profit, but that's up to you. Again, we teach how to roll spreads and, you know, increase your probabilities of success in our trade room and in our trade alerts. Uh, but again, for this video, that is a call credit spread. You want price to stay below that 150. Let's do a put credit spread. So with a put credit spread, let's say you believe that the price of Apple is going to stay above 
139, right? So let's say you believe it's going to go up. Now you would do a put credit spread. So you'd look down right over here, that 139 level. Again, don't just, just do don't just do this randomly, but just for this video right here, here's how you would do a put credit spread. So we can do the 139 right over here. So that means you believe by expiration price is going to stay above 139, right? So if we go out here, you know, kind of do let's do five. 139 to 134, right? So this is where that's a five wide strike and you can see break even is 136.95, max profits 205, max loss is 295. The more that you build your probabilities, you can increase your probability of success the deeper that you go out of the money. Um, but again, it'll also take in more risk as well. So as you can see, as I kind of build these up higher, 139 to 1, let's go to 129, you can see I can take in more credit and then also at the same time, take in more risk. So again, it's a strategy where again, you're an options seller, time value is on your side, you're selling to options buyers, you're building spreads, instead of going naked, you're lowering your break even. Uh, again, credit spreads, one of the best, you know, strategies for swing trading that you can do. Uh, you do need to have a decent size account to do credit spreads, uh, again, because it takes up you know, your margin or your buying power. So it eats into it. So if you have an account less than, you know, $5,000 or so, you can only have a few trades on at a time. So that's something you got to be, be aware of. Um, but again, very, very good strategy. If you have a smaller, you know, $5,000 account, dollar account or so, credit spreads are great to slowly build your account and learn trading. You know, this is a time to really kind of want to share with you too. Make sure you use a paper trading account. So if you're new with trading, practice in a virtual account. Even when you're taking our trade alerts and you come into our community, practice them in a paper trading account if you're new, right? So when we do our options alerts, put them on a paper trading account until you get comfortable, then slowly scale your way up with real money. Don't just jump in with real money if you don't know what you're doing. You know, of course you want to make money right away, but... You know, who doesn't? But you got to know how, know what you're doing first. And that's the stuff we teach you in our courses, our next level, and then also our trade rooms. So the next thing I want to talk to you about are our debit spreads. So again, several different strategies, but again, the most common naked calls and puts, credit spreads, debit spreads. The debit spread is an in-between basically of a naked call and put and a credit spread. So uh, they're more aggressive than a credit spread. So with naked calls and puts, you have to get your direction right. Credit spreads, you still want to get your direction right. So you're not just sitting in that trade for a while. But with a credit spread, the credit, you know, the, tr the stock could trade sideways and you can still profit. So with naked calls and puts, you have to be directionally biased. Credit spreads, not as much. So that's what's also really nice about it. Again, don't take a random trade. You still want to know basic technical analysis. But debit spreads are like the in-between. So you do need to get your direction right on debit spreads. So what a debit spread does is it's a combination of buying and selling an options contract, right? So a naked call and put, you are a buyer. A credit spread, you are a seller. Now with a debit spread, you're buying buying it's an options buying strategy so you're buying an options contract and then you're selling another one to lower your break even so just for this video let's go over to um again so many different ways you can build debit spreads but for this video let's just say you believe that the price of the stock of apple is going to go up so right here let's just take a look at the 142 and you can see it's a combination of buying one and selling one, right? So if I was to kind of straddle price here, you can see this trade, if I built it that way, um, max profits 57, max loss is 43, right? So you can go, you can, you know, again, a lot more that goes into, you know, debit spreads. You can build it this way and you can say, 
you know, you bought the 142, sold the 147. So max profits 295, max loss is 205. So as you can see with this right here, you know, you would need the price of Apple to go up to 144 by expiration date to break even. So again, what's nice about debit spreads is it lowers uh, your break, break even. So there's more of a chance of success on the trade. You know, one of the negatives are it caps your wins, right? So it caps how much you can make. But that's okay because, you know, again, don't get greedy. Of course, you want to get in and have unlimited profits, but that's not realistic. You're not just going to make, that's just not going to happen. Uh, you have to have proper risk management and manage your entries and exits. So don't get fooled by, you know, again, oh, I'm going to get rich on just buying naked options contracts. Not going to happen. It takes time. Trading takes time. You got to make lots of trades to slowly build your account. You're not just going to buy random contracts and get rich. Not going to happen. We're, we just tell you like it is here. I wish that was the case, but that's just not the case when trading. So this debit spread strategy is a call debit spread. So a call debit spread is when you're bullish on the stock. A put debit spread is when you're bearish. So again, kind of reiterate, buy a naked call when you're bullish, buy a naked, call, uh, naked put when you're bearish. With credit spreads, a call credit spread, you're selling, you're an options seller to an options buyer so a call credit spread is bearish, and then a put credit spread is bullish. You're selling to a put buyer. So with debit spreads, it is a call debit spread. And you can look right down here, right? So you can see call debit, right? So it shows you right in the platform. When I go on the other side of things, you know, if I did a put debit, let's say I bought right over here, and I bought one and then again sell, let's say, sell the 38. You can see call, where is it? Debit spread right over here. So it's a, also it's called vertical spread too as well. So you can see put debit spread that falls under the vertical of, or falls under the umbrella of vertical spreads. All the different terminology gets confusing over time. <laughs> but you can see vertical spreads are the umbrella of debit and credit spreads right here. So you can see if I did a put debit spread, you'll see my break even is 140. So that's where you want the price of Apple to fall, right? As a put, so you're doing a debit, put debit spread, you're selling to a put buyer, right? Or you're buying, right? So you're an options buyer. See, I'm confusing myself. <laughs> so you want the price of the price of uh, Apple to fall on this trade as a, with a debit spread, right? Because you're an options buyer. So I know I, I threw a lot to at you in this video, especially if you're new, but those are the three, you know, main strategies with uh, swing trading options as far as how you're building the trade. Again, there's different expiration dates. You know, that was with, you know, the next monthly contract, you know, about three weeks out. Uh, again, there are weekly contracts, so that's if you want to do more shorter, shorter swing trades. Again, swing trading is very kind of broad in its terminology. A swing trader could be anywhere, technically anyone that holds a stock overnight becomes a swing trader. So swing trading could be anywhere from a couple days up to a few, a few weeks, up to a few months. So this is where time, right, you look to build your trade. The more time you have... Uh, you know, it's potentially better, but it also depends on whether you're an options buyer or a seller. If you're buying far out and that price of the stock goes down or trades sideways as an options buyer, if you're buying a naked call or a put, that's where time really eats at your options contract and nails you. As an options seller, time is more on your side, but that doesn't mean just go and sell randomly either. Again, there's a time and a place uh, to build uh, your trades and each strategy. So again, our trading community, we do real-time options alerts. We typically do credit spreads, debit spreads, and also some naked calls and puts, mostly debit and credit spreads. So this is a good video to watch 
uh, if you want to uh, know how to take our trades. Uh, but again, make sure you practice in a virtual account. Know what you're doing first. And in our, in our community, you can come in, you can ask questions in our trade rooms and interact with other community members. So hopefully this video on swing trading options helped you and we'll see you in our community. Enjoy.